So we have standardized our sodium hydroxide solution using potassium hydrogen phthalate. And now we can use that known solution of a base to determine our concentration of our unknown molarity acid. First, we're going to do this by very accurately measuring the volume using a burette for the titrant. So the base, the sodium hydroxide solution, will go in the burette. And we'll carefully read that to two decimal places using the graduations on the burette. And our unknown acid is going to go in the flask. This is a glass volumetric pipette, and it's very similar in ways to a volumetric flask, only it's for a smaller amount. If you look here, it has exactly one, count it one, measurement mark, which means it does exactly one job. It measures 25 milliliters of solution. Well, why would I want to spend the money to have a pipette that measures exactly one thing? Why wouldn't I want something that's graduated like my burette is? Well, it's because this is extremely accurate. It is down to hundredths of a milliliter accuracy. So it has one job, but it does the one job very well. I used the plastic bulb to generate suction to suck up 25 milliliters here. And now over on the side where it's marked E for empty, I squeeze this and this will put the solution into the flask. I'm using 25.00 milliliters of my starting acid solution. So it's an important number that we know very exactly. Our acid is 25 milliliters, 25.00, because I'm using this very accurate measuring equipment. In fact, I will go ahead and add a little extra water so I have some extra solution to see swirling around. And this might concern you. You might think, wait a minute, isn't that going to change the concentration? But all of the acid in my original sample came out of that 25 milliliters. So even if I add extra water now, I'm still going to use that initial 25 milliliters to figure out the molarity of the acid in the end. As before, I need to make sure I put in the indicator, just a couple of drops. Just two or three drops is plenty. Swirl it around so that it's all mixed in, and now I have my starting clear colorless sample. All right, so now we can start the titration, but we need to make sure we write down our initial volume of sodium hydroxide solution. I'm going to measure my starting volume of sodium hydroxide. I put some more into the burette so that we would have plenty for the titration. And again, I'm in between the seven and eight milliliter lines. So I'm going to count down the tenths. That looks like 7.2 and that meniscus is right on the line. So I'm going to call that 7.20 milliliters. So our starting volume of sodium hydroxide is 7.20 milliliters. I'm getting close to where I expect this might be. And you can see I'm adding small amounts and swirling, and the color change is starting to be fairly persistent, so I know I'm getting close to the end point, and I need to add small amounts at a time until I get that persistent light pink color again. And I want to be looking and watching for any droplets, oh, like that, that are going down the glass. And I want to make sure I wash them into the solution so that that base gets in and reacts instead of being stuck to the glass. Okay, so now we have a persistent pale pink color even with swirling. So we can get the final volume for our sodium hydroxide. Again, we can put a white piece of paper behind it. We get eye level to it, so I have to bend down a little bit. And then between 33 and 34, and conveniently enough, and I promise I'm not faking this, that is 33.20. 33.20. We have our last unknown acid sample all queued up and ready to go. I've added the indicator. 
So we just need our starting volume of our titrant. For the analyte, we again put 25.00 milliliters of acid into the flask with a little bit of water and an indicator. So 25.00 milliliters of acid. For the base, our starting number here, and I'm gonna have to stand on my tiptoes a little bit to get eye level. It's in between the six and the seven. That's about 6.65 milliliters. So starting volume for trial two is 6.65 milliliters. Okay. So you can see we've reached the end point of our titration with our third sample here, our second acid sample, because we have a persistent pale pink color. So now I'm gonna to have to bend down to get to eye level so I can get a good accurate measurement. And put the paper up to help me read this. It's in between 32 and 33. Looks like right at the 0.7 line. So that would be 32.70. 32.70. 32 milliliters for the ending volume of our second acid trial. So we've used a titration to standardize our sodium hydroxide. And now we have two trials where we have titrated an unknown acid with our known molarity titrant. And the nice thing about titrations is that subsequent trials tend to go faster than your initial because the second time through, I knew about how much volume of titrant I was going to need. So I could add a larger amount at the beginning without having to worry about running past the end point. Since the first sample took 26 milliliters, I went all the way to 10 milliliters and swirled, then put another 10 milliliters and swirled, and then went by one milliliter chunks until I was at 23 milliliters before I started trying to go by adding a few drops at a time until I got very close to a persistent color change and went to just adding one drop at a time. When you don't have any idea what the concentration is, you have to start by adding fairly small quantities because you don't want to go past the end point and not even know you were getting close. So let's look at an example of the math for the titration problems so that you can use the data in the video to fill out your report. In all of our trials, we used 25.00 milliliter sample of our unknown molarity acid. Remember we used our volumetric pipette to get a very accurate 25.00 milliliters. And we're going to use the starting and ending volumes from the burette because that will allow us to calculate the volume of base that was added. We know from our standardization that the molarity of the base is 0.2674 molar. How can we use this information to get the molarity of the acid? As an example for that, I'm going to use a third trial that I did not make a video of. In the third trial, which I didn't take a video of, the starting volume on the burette was 8.75 milliliters. And once I got to that light pink color, I looked at the ending volume and it was 34.73, just a little bit past the 0.7 line. So how can I use these two numbers to find the volume of base that I added? Well, that's essentially just a subtraction problem. I didn't start at 0, 0.00 milliliters because there wasn't any reason to put 50 milliliters of solution in there. I don't need to waste the sodium hydroxide. So I'll take my ending volume and subtract where I actually started. And that gets me 25.98 milliliters. 
And so that's the same process you would use for any titration to determine the milliliters of titrant that you add. You subtract the initial volume from the ending volume. Well, we know the molarity of the base is 0.2674 because we standardized that. So now let's think about how we could use this to, to figure out our acid. What's well, an acid-base reaction? So this is essentially a stoichiometry problem. I know that molarity times milliliters will get me a number of millimoles. So I do have the molarity and the milliliters of base, so I can find the millimoles of base pretty simply. Molarity times milliliters is millimoles, so I take my molarity, 0.2674 molar, multiply it by 25.98 milliliters, and I get that that volume of base contained 6.947 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. Because I was at the end point, I know I added enough base to neutralize all of my monoprotic acid. I can tell that because my pH is now over, just a tiny bit over seven. And so the, the base is in a slight excess. I have a little bit of extra base. So since it's a monoprotic acid, I can say that there was one millimole of H plus acid needed for one millimole of sodium hydroxide, and I get 6.947 millimoles of acid. So now I know the millimoles of acid, but remember what I was looking for was the molarity of the acid. Molarity is millimoles in a number of milliliters. And it's important that we remember all of the acid came from that 25.00 milliliters. If I just add water, I am diluting my original sample, but I'm not changing the number of millimoles of acid that were in there, and all of that millimoles came from the 25 milliliters sample. So no matter how much volume I actually started with, like for my case, I did add some water to give myself a little more volume to be able to see and swirl around, but adding water doesn't change that number of millimoles. We want the molarity of the acid, and the molarity of the original acid was that 6.947 millimoles in 25 milliliters. So I now know the molarity of my acid was about 0 0.28. Now this is a good point to think about the does it make sense test. If I had put in 25 milliliters of acid and used exactly 25 milliliters of base, I would have had identical concentrations because in order to equal the amount of acid, I added exactly the same amount of base. Well, in this case, I added more base than I had acid. So I needed more milliliters to get the same number of millimoles. That must have meant that my molarity for my acid is a little bit bigger. There were more millimoles per milliliter for the acid because I got that 6.947 millimoles only having to use 25 milliliters instead of 26-ish. But since those volumes were pretty close, I should expect them to be fairly similar in concentrations. And all of my other volumes in the other trials were very close, so the molarity that you get for the other trials should be similar to this, and that will help you check your answers. So now you can use the data in this example to calculate the molarity of the unknown monoprotic acid.